Hey, what's up? Uh, it's Jeffrey Lynn. It is uh, Sunday, October 20th, about 11 p.m. And uh, just gave myself the uh, 25th uh, do picks and treatment, uh, self injection. Uh, feeling quite horrible for the past uh, two weeks, basically, since I got back from Europe. Uh, and I was trying to put off uh, doing the injection because I don't like doing the injection when I'm not clear headed, uh, when my hands are shaky and um, I just don't want to mess it up. Uh, but today I went ahead with it uh, for a couple reasons, which is uh, what I want to talk about in this video, uh, which is um, sometimes you should do things, um, difficult things, uh, when you're not feeling well. and uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about how I'm doing on do picks in. And I'm feeling like crap because of the fires, the wildfires here in LA. As soon as I landed, uh, fire season started. Um, it's been 100 degrees, close to 100 degrees. Um, it's cooled down a little bit this weekend, got a little bit of a breather, but. It's going to ramp up and it's going to be about 100 degrees all week this week. And I'm already starting to feel it. As most of you know, I um, feel weather coming in uh, almost a week away. So I'll start sweating. I'll, I'll have all the physical um, reactions or physical manifestations of like I was in 100 degree weather before it even gets here. A lot of other problems are acting up. Um, you know, my tendons and joints are all uh, swollen, inflammation. Um, my eyes are watery, and I don't think it's because of Dupixin. I think it's just because of the weather so dry and it is so hot. Um, even uh, staying inside with the air conditioning on. And that blue thing back there is the humidifier, and I have those running all day, but... Um, you know, somehow dust just gets in and uh, so much chemicals and so much uh, debris and, uh, you know, metals and electronics are burned up in the fires and uh, just gets inside. Um, even when we have all the windows closed, you know, it just somehow the dust just gets in. So... I think that's why I'm reacting to maybe some metal poisoning from what's in the air. Um, but uh, I haven't felt this bad and haven't had um, all these uh, uh, tendon swelling and joint swelling uh, in pr probably all year. Uh, maybe it was last year that I felt this way and um, have migraines going on. There's like a sharp pain right here and then just general... Um, uh, head pressure. Um, right now my sinuses are clear, but uh, for most of yesterday, uh, it's completely blocked. Um, my my skin is flaring up. Um, and, uh, like right here, it's, it might be a little bit hard to see, but this side of uh, my lips, my cheek are uh, uh, just puffing out, uh, swollen uh, with rashes. Um, it doesn't itch, so... Um, Underneath, I still actually feel so much better than ever in my life. But just compared to how I was feeling just, you know, two weeks ago in Europe, you know, this is like, you know, a, mo a huge difference of how I'm feeling. So there's a couple of things uh, coming up this week um, because it's going to be uh, ramping up to 100 degrees on Tuesday, which happens to be my birthday. So uh, almost feels like the weather's out to get me, just picking that day for the hottest uh, day this month. Um, but um, having heat wave coming, I just want to get in front of it and do the injection before I start feeling worse. Maybe I'll feel better or like, okay, during the heat wave, but the chances of that are pretty low. So even though I'm feeling like crap today, I'm expecting to feel even worse uh, come Tuesday. So I just want to do the injection while I am still in control of uh, my hands, even though 
they're shaky because of the the tendonitis and um and also uh since being back from Europe um my cervical spine injury that kind of paralyzes my body from the neck down and paralyzes my hands and feet uh that's also acted up again so uh it's been harder and harder to control my hands but usually that gets worse in the heat just because of like like how uh parts of the body expand when it's hot um so um i'm just trying to get it ahead of that and do the injection while i can even though it's not easy and it's not the ideal conditions uh sometimes you just got to get ahead of problems and do it when it's not ideal so you don't have to do it when everything falls apart um and that kind of brings me to the point of this video which is uh sometimes and actually a lot of times i do things when it's difficult when it's not ideal when people say i shouldn't do things for example um i played the trumpet in the marching band uh even start starting from 4th grade all the way through high school did the marching band being on grass being under the sun here's a guy who's allergic to everything and has severe asthma playing the trumpet out on grass in under the sun which was you know damaging my skin even even further um i'll get to that back story of like why i got into playing trumpet in a bit but the fact is that i did it so when you do things when you're feeling horrible and you know you can do it the rest of life gets really easy because if you can feel it when you're feeling your worst then you can definitely do it when you're feeling your best so a lot of you have asked like how i got through school how you know i was able to work just because i've gone so used to doing things when i'm feeling horrible and doing difficult things you know like our marching band was 400 pieces and you know we would run end zone to end zone on the football field um a lot of people you know slipped just because we were going so fast um literally running across the field so knowing that i could do that even though i did it with several uh emergency room visits asthma attacks and allergic reactions even though i ended up in the hospital so many times i knew i could do it and also i knew i could survive emergency uh emergency room visits i could survive the ambulance that was carried out of uh uh these band competitions on an ambulance in the middle of the day and then i went back at night for the finals and i still played that um and it's not always advisable to push yourself so hard but knowing that you can do things when it seems impossible makes the rest of life easier because if your life gets a little bit better if you get a little bit healthier things get a tiny bit smoother when there's a little bit less competition it seems like the world opens up whereas other people who always had life that was smooth um as soon as they they hit an obstacle they didn't know how to deal with it or they didn't know how worse their health can get so they're afraid that they're going to get injured and um be unable to do anything for the rest of their lives blah 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 but if you already know that you can suffer so much and still keep going because of your health has shown you like the lower limits of your abilities uh sorry the lower limits of um how bad things can get then anything above this anything above the the worst conditions um you can do is so much more than other people can and also when you get used to doing things in chaos when you're not feeling well when you're dizzy when you're nauseous when you're not thinking clearly um i mean a lot of that this is what navy seal training does is um they get you so confident in being in chaos and being uh in suffering and in pain um and knowing that you can do it it gives you confidence that uh next time when th- things are um going to hell um you can keep calm you can uh do things you can uh take out the 
EpiPen and save yourself instead of being freaked out by uh, the reactions you have or how big the uh, EpiPen needle is. Just for example, um, a lot of people uh, who aren't used to crises um, get hurt because they don't have experience dealing with chaos and uh, they don't know how to react. You know, they could kind of get that deer in the headlights look. They, uh, you know, some bad event is coming at them, like a car um, approaching a deer and the deer just freezes. A lot of people just freeze because they don't know what to do in a chaotic situation or when they're not feeling well or when they're in pain. So um, since those of us with chronic illnesses are suffering all the time, we might as well use this opportunity to train ourselves to be able to function and maybe function very well um, at suboptimal levels, at very uh, chaotic levels of our health and uh, situation. And um, the more we practice it, the better we get it, get at it. The pain and suffering never goes away. That's not what we're, what we're trying to go for, but the pain and suffering kind of brings our life quality down here. Okay, so you're starting from here and the pain and suffering brings your life down here. So you might as well try to do something positive and gain some life skills and uh, determination and resilience. This is what the Navy SEALs do in their training uh, to, to push, push yourself that limit so that at least you get some positive and not your life isn't all just like this negative and suffering. So um, anyway, that's... Uh, in a nutshell, why I do things that are hard and when I'm not feeling well. And also, I'm almost never feeling well. So if I waited till the perfect time when I'm feeling 100% to do something, I would never have done anything in my life. So um, anyway, today I went ahead um, and did the Dupix injection. I was nauseous. I was having these hot sweats. I don't know if my um, nervous system, my central nervous system or, um, or other, there's like a chemical imbalance or something, um, hormone imbalance. I don't know. Something's going on, uh, making me sweat a lot too, but, um, went ahead and, and, uh, gave myself the injection. So the quick update on Dupixin is that, uh, it's still doing an amazing job for my health and, uh, at least during the time I was in Europe, it, I, I continued to improve a lot, and which is why I was um, really not looking forward to coming back to L.A. Um, I did do injections closer and closer the last two months just so I can squeeze in the injection so that I can go to Europe. Um, and it was also a test to see um, if I'm now able to handle um, closer injections instead of like the eight weeks uh, between injections. Uh, before I went to Europe, the injection uh, frequency I had was uh, four and a half weeks between the injections. And um, briefly, I, you know, I did feel my eyelids uh, get irritated, irritated a tiny bit, but uh, it wasn't horrible. Uh, but I still think... Um, four and a half weeks was pushing it too far. I think uh, like six weeks, which is what I'm doing now uh, between injections, uh, that is the sweet spot for me to still um, get improvements for my skin. My eczema is getting better. Uh, my food allergies are getting better and my asthma is getting better. Um, and even all the, just like the joint swelling before uh this um, heat wave that's coming this week before this, uh, all my joint swelling, internal swelling have improved a lot because of uh, Dupixent. I'm even able to uh, reduce the amount of cyclosporin immunosuppressants that I'm taking. So um, the experiment with increasing my dosage by um, shortening the injection frequency uh, to four and a half weeks recently um, that was showing me that I could do it, but four and a half weeks seems like a little bit too close for me still. Um, so six weeks, uh, it's about where I'm at. And um, just really happy with overall how I'm doing 
uh, on DuPixent and I uh, encourage you guys to go and look back at uh, my very first video uh, if you're just starting DuPixent um, because there is like a flare up uh, redness peeling phase in the beginning for me that seemed very severe and if you looked at it on the surface you would actually be scared and think things are getting worse but underneath I was feeling like new skin was growing so it seemed to me like the initial redness and swelling and peeling for Dupixin is shedding off all the damaged layers of skin that you've had uh, for however long you've had eczema so you like the only way for skin to heal is for it to shed it off so um, Dupixin healed the skin re really quickly so you had to uh, shed off all those damaged layers and once you get past that um, most of the people that have um, given this advice to and that have stuck with Dupixin are super happy with uh, where they are now like the, their whole lifestyle have changed their their lives have improved so much so um, anyway that's uh, update for Dupixin treatment number 25 uh, it is let's see um, 875th day I've been on Dupixent, so um, that's the update. And uh, if you guys felt this was helpful, hit the subscribe button. Again, my name is Jeffrey Lin. Um, I suffer from multiple uh, severe immune-related chronic illnesses, uh, including the top five or top three most severe eczema conditions that um, I've had at both the wet eczema and the dry, scaly thick reptilian uh, like eczema uh, elephant skin like elephant skin like uh, conditions uh, literally allergic to everything on the planet everything i've been tested for all foods so there's no exceptions everything in the environment uh, i'll react to things that's um, a mile away with the doors closed in a car um, that's how sensitive i am and um, even internal allergies, inflammation of joints, you know, uh, damn, uh, imperfect eyesight because of allergic reactions and inflammations. And, uh, um, you know, with my asthma, I couldn't even laugh as a kid. I couldn't run. Um, that's just how sensitive, uh, my whole body is. So, um, anyway, if you guys feel the tips that I'm sharing with, uh, with you on this channel are helpful please subscribe leave a comment below let me know you, you stopped by uh, really love meeting everybody and like starting a community uh, on YouTube so um, anyway thanks again and uh, hopefully I can survive this week uh, it's my birthday week but uh, it's usually not the best week for me uh, it's always always a tough one